Let's ask him. Devontae, four touchdowns, uh, a fifth that uh, you got flagged on. Was one of those plays more significant in your mind in terms of what you proved and what you displayed on that play? Um, well, I'd probably say the first one because, you know, it's, it's always great to have a, a, a good drive um, coming out on the first drive of the, of the, of the game, kind of get the fans into it and uh, get your team going. And let alone, I mean, it was the first play. So I think that was kind of the thing that got us going and, and just made everybody pretty lively. And, and I think that kind of set the tone for the, for the game. Eric talked about uh, the, the man coverage being disrespect for you. Did you take it personally? And, and how much can you really get fired up by something like that? Um, I don't know. Uh, Derek kind of, we kind of use that as we joke around and say it's disrespect. We don't really take it as disrespect, <laughs> like if someone plays man. But, you know, it's just something that I've talked to um, many other reporters about, and it's just a thing I feel like you have to take advantage of if guys are going to go out there and play uh, man to man on you, or even uh, cover two man. You just got to take advantage of it and go out there and show them that they shouldn't be doing that against the type of guys we have out there. I mean, not just me, we have Josh, uh, Burst, everybody out there, Greg. I feel like we can all beat man coverage um, just as easy. So when guys do that, you just got to go out there and punish That third uh, touchdown you had, a lot of guys catch that ball and step out of bounds. You're really close to that sideline. Did you think when you caught it that you had a chance to score? Well, I think every time, I mean, I, me and Burst have the same problem sometimes. You know, we get excited and might get happy feet and start running all over the place and the coaches get on us about it sometimes but you know it's just a thing you're just always trying to make a play so anytime I get the ball I feel like I can do something with it. And coach talked about the way you responded to being called out as he said for the uh, Hawaii game. How did you experience all that? How did you turn that into positive momentum for yourself? Well you know I honestly I think it was blown up into a bigger deal than it really needed to be because, you know, that's not the type of player I am. I was, like I said, I don't like to make excuses. I was a little under the weather, so it was hard for me to, you know, go 100 miles an hour the whole time. And I, that definitely affected my play, and it looked uh, a lot worse than it actually was. So, you, you know, when I got over that and then talked to the coaches and everything, I mean, their job is to let me know when, when I'm not performing the way I should be. So. Uh, apologize to the coaches, players, and everything. Tell them I'll be back. And then the next opportunity I had, just went out there and just, you know, played even harder. So when I have a deal like that, it's people question my how, how hard I'm, I play or things like that. You just got to shrug it off because I know the type of player that I am and my teammates do and even my coaches do. So I believe that's why they, you know, confronted me about it or brought it to the media or whatever. And, you know, just got to fix it. And, Better next week. You kind of like being coached hard, though, right? I mean, you're not a guy that oh, yeah. must be treated with kid gloves, right? Man, I mean, my whole life in, in, in basketball, football, I really can't name a coach that wasn't really on me. And I, I've never had coaches that are, you know, good job, Tay, good job. Like every time, you know, I'm not looking for things like that. I'm looking for a guy that's going to get on me. And, you know, I'm supposed to go out there and get touchdowns. I'm supposed to, you know, maybe catch. 14, 16, or whatever. If I have 20 balls thrown to me, that's what that's you know that's the standard, and um, I have no problem being held. Um, you know, having guys stay on me when I'm not doing what I should be doing, or if I'm not uh, living up to that standard. Devonte, can you just talk about the relationship that you have with Derek and how you guys you know almost can communicate non-verbally, especially on that first play, you know, but just the whole season. I mean that. As soon as I got here, I mean, we, we kind of hit it off. So, you know, right right off the bat, um, I came here, you know, mainly because of him. I mean, I, the coaches had a lot to do with it, Coach Hill and his staff. And then, um, you know, when I when I saw Derek on film, I was like, I, I was really fired up about playing here. And then, uh, obviously, once I got here and I redshirted, I was a little bummed at first that I wasn't going to be able to be on the field with them that first year. but. You know, we, we always got extra work in all the time, and, you know, he's one of my best friends, so he's a great guy, and it's, he's, he's a really good guy to have in your life to make sure that, you know, he keeps me on a straight path. Maybe if, if you know, I'm thinking about going and hanging out, instead I go get, a, get an extra lift with him on Sunday when, when it's our day off because that's just the type of guy that he is. 
Do you guys ever get a chance to reflect on what's being accomplished? Well, I mean, that, that kid is so modest that it doesn't even, he doesn't even give me time to be, be too happy about stuff, you know. He, he always wanted me to get better, so good job you had. You had four, almost five touchdowns, so I mean, I, I threw you a, a hook in there. Sometimes you could you could have took that one to the house too. So you know, it, he's never going to be you know content and uh, never going to let me be too excited about something. We just keep moving on and, and get better.